Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this uh, one hour uh, summer uh, super seminar uh, to talk about one industry in particular, which is food, agriculture, agri-tech, all pulled into one and how uh, the UAE and Dubai in particular can turbocharge uh, this business. We have put together a panel of uh, experts today to look at this industry and its sub-vertical from various angles so that at the tail end you see where the UAE stands as a jurisdiction today, what are its key features and how uh, this industry can actually grow, be nurtured uh, here with power seeds in the Gulf. So we will try to tackle that from all angles. And on the top end, you will get the opportunity to Q&A both our speakers. And there and after, we will be happy to relay uh, any additional question that may come. Some rules, uh, as I'll just hinted, one, please do close. And I see some people do not have that. Put yourself on mute, keep it there. And if you wish to send a question on the tail end, please do it uh, through a small uh, log here and otherwise please enjoy the show and uh, before we go any further uh, a couple of open remarks from Al I think you have said what you needed to do you have something else to add Al? I do have remarks here yes thank you very much. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, cela me donne la grande privilege de vous présenter aujourd'hui le Dubai Advantage au nom de Dubai FTE. Bon français et un peu réel, je vais faire ma présentation en anglais. Et bien sûr, mon français est plus acadien que celui de la République française. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today to explore opportunities for partnership in Dubai's vibrant food and agricultural sector and how business and investors in France can benefit from them. We are grateful for MHQ for helping us to facilitate this webinar to give you a comprehensive picture of the opportunities in Dubai's food and agricultural sector. Representatives from Dubai municipality, Jebel Ali Free Zone or JAFSA and du Dubai Multi-Commodity Center or DMCC will join our team to share with you the Dubai advantage and the city's preparedness for inviting investments in the sector. Food security and agricultural self-sufficiency are key strategic aims for the government. By using innovation and best practices in the entire value chain from food production to consumption, Dubai and the UAE have made continuous gains. In spite of the obvious challenges to do with the region's climate, the UAE's strong network of trade relations combined with the supply chain advantages, thanks to our excellent ports and connected infrastructure have ensured better food security. Strategically targeted investments and policies have strengthened Dubai's ecosystem for food production and supply chain efficiency. As a major re-export center, Dubai also maintains excellent facilities for the storage of fresh produce. We have focused on research and development of agricultural technologies that offer a variety of crops and yields. This is essential to cater for the needs of a growing population. Dubai's demographic profile has proven to be beneficial for the growth of out of home consumption and food delivery as part of the food service sector. The steadily increasing num number of tourists who enjoy our city year after year become vital and are thriving. Local franchise partners continue to have strong business prospects. We find that the new market entrants continue to trust these players to launch their concepts in the UAE. The UAE and France share a multifaceted partnership. The food and beverage sector is a key component of this, as the following numbers will demonstrate. The UAE is France's second largest trade partner in the region. Non-oil trade between our countries was valued at 27.62 billion dirhams or 6.4 billion euros in 2019. 
And there are over 600 French companies operating in the UAE across many sectors, including oil and gas, energy environment, banking, hospitality, retail, defense, luxury, and transport. And the UAE is among the top importers of French products in the food and beverage category. In the 10 years up to 2019, the demand for French food and beverage products has increased by 50% in the UAE. And during the five-day Gulf food show in, in back in uh, February, uh, 80 French exhibitors, 40% uh, of these were new entrants, highlighted their products across four different pavilions dedicated to world food, dairy, meat and poultry, and beverages. And Gulf food is the world's largest annual food and beverage trade exhibition, and it takes place here in Dubai. French cream, cheeses, and butters are favorites in the UAE and contribute to our good health. The UAE's imports of products total more than 7.5 tons in 2018. And of these imports, French cream in 2018 were valued at more than 36 million dirhams or 8.4 million euros, showing a compound annual growth rate of 15.3% since 2010. This partnership has evolved on the basis of a mutual desire to expand bilateral ties. High profile minister level meetings have taken place as recently as September of this year under the framework of this strategic partnership. Ladies and gentlemen, with a global reputation of being diverse, stable, and a secure economy, Dubai is the city of the future. Providing seamless access to a huge market of consumers in the Middle East, Africa, South Asia, and the CIS, Dubai is an established gateway to the region. With a mature and growing infrastructure, Dubai is also a global hub for trade and investment flows. This is the reason that more than 60% of the Fortune 1000 companies have established a presence in Dubai. A robust food and agricultural strategy is essential to counter the effects of international supply chain disruptions of the kind we are witnessing during the COVID lockdowns. The UAE's resilience in this sector was sharply underlined. The UAE's National Food Security Strategy 2051 aims to achieve a zero hunger by ensuring safe access to nutritious and sufficient food all year round throughout the world. It specifically aims to implement resistant agricultural practices that increase productivity and production, which will help maintain ecosystems. One of the key aims of the strategy is to develop international partnerships to, div to diversify food sources. The UAE Sustainable Agricultural System approved in June of this year aims to increase self-sufficiency in crops, optimize returns, and encourage investments in the agricultural sector. Artificial intelligence, blockchain technologies, and smartphone applications are being deployed to benefit the sector. The food and agricultural sector is one of the highly attractive business sectors of Dubai and the UAE, supported by a focused and responsive policies. Our team at Dubai FDI is at your service always to assist you in any way possible and to ensure that you have a seamless investment journey in Dubai. Thank you for your time and attention. Merci pour votre attention. Jan? Merci beaucoup, Al, uh, pour ces quelques mots d'ouverture, and the rest will follow in English because, of course, uh, we speak English better than French these days. But that was fantastic. Laid the land very well. What I would like to do before we dive into the menu of uh, what can be tackled in the agriculture and FNB business in the UAE is just to step back and to recall and remind ourselves uh, what the UAE has achieved over the past 15 years. And if you look into your screen, what you see is all the top uh, financial center worldwide. You see all the top 10 foreign direct investment jurisdiction worldwide. And you also see the top structuring 
center worldwide. Why do I show these to you? Is that they have one thing in common. Only five jurisdiction are reflected in all these uh, three columns. I will zoom in for you, it will be easier to read. And what you see is that these five include the UAE. So make no mistake, what you see there is a powerhouse of a country that has designed and built an infrastructure to facilitate business growth for people from abroad wanting to do business in the UAE, but also in the, uh, the region as large as our subsequent uh, speakers will uh, touch upon. The other thing is it's a, re a region that has been following trends in terms of best practice regulation and increasing uh, and improving its ecosystem and its tools. Uh, economic substance has been the talk of the town everywhere in low tax or no tax jurisdiction under the pressure of the EU. In the UAE, we do not have an issue with economic substance. We have a solid uh, law in place now, and it is perfectly uh, acceptable or comparable to what you see in Europe. In other words, you can play uh, tennis or do business with the UAE without any flag from uh, another jurisdiction or a regulator. You also see quite a lot of migra migration from lower uh, rated center, uh, remember are my three column to the UAE as a result. So for groups that are international, they may want to consider the UAE with this in mind as well. The other aspect of the UAE is that historically, the UAE has two jurisdictions within one. It has the UAE mainland and it has so-called free zone. We have two representatives of the most prominent free zones of Dubai talking to us in no time. Uh, in an effort to increase foreign direct investment further, what the UAE has done is slowly opened the UAE mainland, uh, sovereign land, to up to 100% foreign, foreign ownership. Until now, this foreign ownership was restricted to 49% with a mandatory local partner. This is still the case for most businesses, but there is now an open door for foreigners to seek uh, exemption and to get up to 100% foreign ownership in some sectors and subject to specific condition. So if you are thinking of entering the market, what should you be doing? Well, you should ask yourself four questions. What is my activity? Who are my clients? Where are my clients located? And where do I operate from? And the two most important one is whether if you are dealing on a B2B basis or B2C basis, this is likely to drive you either through one of the free zones or in the UAE mainland. If you are ending up in the UAE mainland and we will give you a life case on the tail end, then you will have to set up if you undertake a trading activity, a limited liability company, retain a, a local partner to hold 51% of the shares by law or seek an exemption. And this will be your vehicle of choice. If you are uh, deploying a deemed activity of service, then you are likely to opt for another type of structure, a branch of a foreign company, for example. As I mentioned, control can remain in the hand mostly of the foreign based partners. A lot of businesses operate under that model. Uh, there are some mechanisms that exist. I'm happy to explain them more in detail offline. But where uh, the success of the UAE has been built is by saying, look, a lot of people want to come to the UAE, but they do not necessarily want to do business only in the UAE. They want to work around the region. And for that, the concept of free geographical zone has been created where any business from abroad can come, set up, operate in a generally tax-free environment and while holding 100% of equity in this business. This is very simple, very effective, and has generated tremendous success for the country. So we'll look later on on a case that will show both these vehicles. But... <laughs>
Thank you very much, Al, for your opening uh, earlier. And uh, one point that I think very important is you talked about food safety and uh, how much uh, the Dubai municipality is doing uh, in that respect. So we wanted to dive a little bit more into that. And uh, to touch on the topic is the excellent Hassa Al Sumaiti from Dubai municipality. Hassa, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Hilsa. I'm from the Dubai Municipality Food Safety Department. Uh, I will be discussing about food and food uh, requirements, uh, regulations related to food labeling, documentation, and what you need to do for planning to import to Dubai. So next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, I'll tell you about our role here. Uh, Dubai Municipality has Food Safety Department, which consists of four main sec uh, sectors. Uh, first of all, we have uh, a section related to managing food import and export services, anything related to food import and export. Uh, second, we have inspection services. Uh, where uh, inspections are conducted, routine inspections for uh, uh, restaurants, for hospitals, uh, schools, any, any uh, food-related matters, uh, we have inspections done in the premises itself. Uh, next, we have permit assurance, where we issue food-related permits. It could be temporary or uh, for uh, long term. Uh, it assures transparency, transparency and accountability uh, amongst traders. Uh, finally, we have studies and label compliance, where we study labels. Uh, we make sure we put the risk assessments for food products. Uh, any food-related studies are done through studies and label compliance. Uh, this is a general overview about the statistics. Um, of uh, average shipments monthly uh, we are receiving to the airport. We have four main ports, which are airport, seaport, land port, and climate uh, follow-up and DIP. These ports are operating 24-7, non-stop. So uh, the highest is we received shipments from uh, seaports, which is 12,006 consignments per uh, month followed by airports, uh, land ports, and finally the follow-up. Um, here I'm explaining, I will explain what is the pathway and how the, uh, as an importer or uh, ex sorry, exporter, what are the requirements. Uh, you can uh, obtain your own company here by uh, having your own UAE trade license. It can be obtained through any Emirates and UAE. Uh, or you can deal with a locally already uh, distributed, which established distributor here. Uh, then you can, um, the company needs to be registered in our online platform and by municipalities to be uh, able to access to all the online services, including item registration and label assessment. For uh, registering the food, uh, registering the food product is mandatory before bringing the shipment itself. So only what you have to do is to make sure that you have a clear picture of the product itself to check what is the material of the packaging material. Uh, and next, you need to have um, a clear picture of the label itself. You need to read the label before you bring the product. So item registration is mandatory before bringing the product. It is done online. Uh, no physical presence of the product is required. Uh, attachment is enough. Uh, the second service is uh, food label assessment. Uh, by doing so, uh, the company can uh, check uh, if the label is according to the standards or not. You can verify you, the compliance of the product before bringing the, the product. In case if there is any unpermitted ingredient, uh, some ingredients might be, might be okay in France, but it is not permitted in UAE. So by doing assessment, you will be able to avoid this kind of conflict before bringing the product. Uh, the next step is to prepare import documents. There are documents coming along with the shipment itself before from country of origin. And of course, there are documents that are uh, uh, 
established are issued here in UAE. Uh, when the shipment arrives, physical inspection is done at the port. And finally, the action is taken on the shipment depending on the inspection. Next slide, please. So this is the pathway inspection at port happens. There is a, from coming from any of the ports. Uh, in case all the items are not available at time of inspection, let's say there are items at the back of the container. So inspection can be done at the company's warehouse or the premises. So after the inspection is done at the company's warehouse or at the port itself, final decision is done. Um, for this, we are using the federal system, which is called ZAI. Uh, the all the inspections are uh, and uh, actions are taken through that little system. Uh, as for the label requirements, this slide is important. Um, when you are planning to bring any product, uh, Arabic label is mandatory. But in case you are you don't have any Arabic label, you can uh, put a sticker on the product uh, with an Arabic sticker. So um, these are the informations that are mandatory to be uh, described or viewed on the label. Barcode, if there's barcode, it's fine. Otherwise, we have internal barcode. If you don't have any international barcode, product name, brand name, net weight, these informations are important. Next slide, please. To get the full standard of the label, we have a website for Emirates Standardization and Metrology Authority. This is their website. You can purchase a uh, standard for any product. They have different standards for different products, so juices, milk, uh, water. So you can purchase the standard from this website. Next, please. As for the required documents that are coming with the shipment, uh, these do these are the documents. We require health certificates. It should be from the government uh, authority there related to food. Uh, halal certificates in case the product has meat, poly, or any of the uh, byproducts such as gelatin. So in that case, we require halal certificate. Packing list. Um, if there uh, if there is any other certificates such as uh, uh, Gillette, um, there are radioactivity certificates from Japan. Uh, we, for, uh, moreover, for fish products, we require a statement and health certificate that this product is wild caught or is free from uh, pork uh, protein. In case of, in, in case the product has a statement saying that it is organic or uh, GMO free. So we require a certificate uh, that uh, that states that it is organic uh, or demo free. Next slide, please. Uh, for health certificates, uh, these are the uh, elements that should be mentioned. There should be a clear uh, logo and address on the label from the authority itself. itself. Uh, it should be linked to the shipment. Uh, describing what are the items, uh, how much is the quantity, weight of the products, and it should have a statement saying that it is fit for human consumption. Uh, original certificates must be presented at time of inspection. Uh, there are uh, online verification systems for some countries, uh, so we can check if it is original or not by a uh, verification link. Next slide. As for halal certificate, uh, these are all the things that should be mentioned or on the halal certificate. Again, it should be original, issued by certification, uh, halal certification body approved in UAE. To check if it is approved or not, you can, uh, next slide please. Uh, you can check this, uh, all the halal certification bodies approved annually by visiting uh, ESMA's website and ER uh, to check if the certification body is approved or not. Uh, Ministry of Climate Change, uh, back, okay. Ministry of Climate Change and Environment has uh, all the list of slaughterhouses that are approved for hygienic purposes only. We need to check both, it's approved in both uh, lists. As for France, uh, these are some statistics for past uh, 
for use. Uh, total imports uh, means uh, total imported items have been decreased, uh, as you can see, and the containers has been decreased in the past four years. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can see, in 2019, the highest imported items were water, uh, followed by food and products, and then uh, dairy products. These are the most imported items from France in 2019. Next, please. Uh, these are statistics for last three years. Um, as you can see that um, animal and natural mineral water has been the highest imported items in the past three years, uh, followed by white sugar, cacao, and so on. Next slide, please. For food-related business activities, as I mentioned earlier, that we have a permanent and temporary permits. Uh, permanent uh, permits are for business layout. Uh, if there are some small home enterprises, also we are monitoring these enterprises. So uh, all the permits are issued within the same working days. Uh, it is uh, by uh, an online service platform called Foodwatch. They can get also temporary uh, permits for kiosk, uh, food kiosk uh, events if there are food trucks, uh, trucks or vending machines, all the permits are issued through food watch and can be obtained within the same day. So that would be all. Um, thank you so much. I hope it was beneficial. If you have any inquiries, you can send us an email and we will be more than happy to support. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very comprehensive overview of the system uh, related to any import trade of uh, edible goods in the Emirates. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, it cl it's clearly seems that the, the UAE and the, the Emirate of Dubai in particular uh, has this under check. It's important to note that this covers both uh, UAE mainland, so sovereign land, and the free zone. And two of these uh, largest free zones, the one that plays the biggest role in the food commodity uh, trade chain and logistic chain, are here to explain what is the angle. And our next speaker will explain you a little bit more uh, what DMCC's angle is with respect to global trade of commodities. James Bernard from DMCC, unmute yourself and tell us what time it is. Thanks, Jan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks to the FDI for Dubai FDI for having us uh, join this session this morning. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little overview of DMCC. I know everyone's short of time, so I like to kind of pick up the pace a bit. Uh, the first slide shows you who we are. So we're obviously a government of Dubai authority, and we were started in 2002. Um, we were mandated by royal decree to increase commodity trade flow through the region and, um, and really focus on various sectors, including food and agriculture. So first and foremost, we are a regulator and the master developer of DMCC Free Zone. In addition to that, we are a trade facilitator. So we have various products and services and we provide um, different industry sectors with these, uh, which I'll get into in just a minute. And because of all this, we have a slogan that uh, DMCC is made for trade. So as I mentioned, we're a free zone and we register companies. It's, it's not always apparent what free zones do, but we register and license companies so that you can set up businesses and operate out of Dubai, the business community that we have. And globally, there are a number of different free zones, as Jan mentioned earlier, but generally in Dubai and across the UAE, the basic offering is 0% corporate tax, 0% employment tax, 100% business ownership, and also 100% repatriation of capital. There's lots of dual taxation agreements out there um, that can be taken advantage with different countries as well. So we're also a property developer. We're the master de de developer of Jumeirah Lakes Towers um, residential and business community. And right now we're also building our latest project called Uptown. We're also, um, we also facilitate and support trade across multiple industry sectors. And I like, as Jan mentioned earlier, it's really important to say that this is all done within a highly efficient regulatory environment. 
which is all the more important these days when you're looking at economic substance and uh, compliance uh, globally. Uh, also, last on this slide, um, it's really important that we mention that we realize how difficult it is for businesses out there at the moment. And we, among many of the other free zones, have, uh, have got business support packages in place with highly discounted fees uh, to support new and existing members. So this slide provides you with a good overview of the world of the wide range of industry sectors that are represented at DMCC. You can see that we have a roughly 1400 different food and agri companies from very large ones to tiny uh, one man startups, man woman startups. And this, um, the food and agri business represents about 8% of our total member companies, which is quite a significant portion of them. And here we always like to show some of the more well-known brand companies that we're fortunate enough to have at DMCC. We're also home to the Global Pulse Confederation. They've been members of DMCC for a long time. Um, we work with their annual Global Pulse Conventions globally. Uh, we're also home to um, an organization which we established, which is the DMCC Food Trade Group, which has become a key enabler and supporter of the regional food and agri uh, business. So you may ask yourself why, what's attracted to um, them to DMCC? We've, we've heard what Dubai and the UAE has to offer. And, um, and over the years, we've been focusing at DMCC on various sectors and have helped uh, different sectors come in and establish markets across Dubai and the region. We have a wide, a wide range of innovative trade platforms that you can see here on this slide. Um, we've really helped to put Dubai on the map along with Dubai FDI and, and um, Dubai Airport Free Zone and Jebel Ali Free Zone um, across a number of key sectors uh, by providing different platforms, products, services uh, that are all specific to different industry sectors where we see the value add. And that's a value add for the sector, not, not specifically for us. We're there to try and create markets and, and volume and bring in trade. So with a wide range of benefits that include better ways to access regional markets, as I touched upon, um, but also we provide access to finance through our trade flow platform. And you can also reduce the risk of, um, of trading that you may have uh, with different products on our futures exchange and also FX. And um, the exchange is called DGCX, sorry, I forgot to mention. And additionally, we offer businesses the opportunity to gain recognition um, regionally through our trade groups and clubs, as well as obtaining market insights and critical trade um, data that you can get through many of the organizations represented here today. So through our combined efforts, we have been able to establish Dubai as a crucial global hub across multiple sectors, as you can see here. Gold was uh, one, of the, uh, one of the sectors where we started. Dubai is known as the city of gold. But uh, more recently, we have developed our coffee um, hub for the region. And of course, we're very active in the agri sector as well. You'll see in, in the following slides. So the next two slides offer a couple of examples of what we have to offer um, two of the most important sectors for us. And um, the first one is the tea center. So we established this tea center to create a unique trading hub. Uh, and it was positioned, it's positioned as the UAE as the world's largest re-exporter of tea. Um, it doesn't grow much tea at all. I think it's most of the tea is in the, in the hands of private um, growers, but but it doesn't rep represent a, a large tea um, region. And that's allowed it to be tea neutral, which encourages companies to bring in tea and be able to blend it with different origins. So our key services in the tea center are warehousing, blending, packaging, um, different solutions, as well as member benefits, such as the tea tasting and the whole, um, the whole uh, industry sector requirements. And we're still developing that. Our members include tea, uh, include tea producers, regional importers and exporters, and international merchants. And in terms of numbers, the center has the capacity to store 5,000 tons, but we're growing that volume. So we've seen demand there and we want to increase that. 
And that's the equivalent to the Saudi annual consumption, just for perspective. And as of August this year, we've uh, processed a little over 30 million kilos of, uh, of tea. And that's up from last year in 2019, when we facilitated roughly 20, uh, 20 million kilos. So our latest project, which is proving to be very successful, uh, we launched back in February 2019, the coffee center. And the idea is to connect the fastest growing and highly valuable consumer markets of the Middle East and Europe um, to, of course, the producing areas of Ethiopia, India, Indonesia, Uganda, Vietnam. The center offers logistical support and um, various other products and services. The key, the key core services include roasting, warehousing, packaging, and more specialized offerings such as coffee tasting and brand development and barista trading, uh, training. Um, it also creates a really valuable opportunity for uh, new products to be developed with um, in-house. So you could develop new brands there and really focused on the um, specialty coffee market of Dubai. So as of August, we had roughly 4,500 tons of coffee facilitated through the center worth about $30 million. And one fact that I like to put in there, which is really um, indicative of how important this is, all major GCC countries, including Saudi, Kuwait, Oman, Bahrain, have imported coffee from the center post COVID lockdown, which really, as I said, goes to reinforce the value of the center and the importance of Dubai as a uh, global coffee hub for the region. So lastly, I'd just like to finish off with saying that we were proud to receive a, our sixth award from the Dubai FDI Financial Times Group for the best free zone of the year. So um, we use that to show that um, we're not just talking, but we actually deliver the goods. And I'd be delighted to hear from anyone who has further interest. And thanks for your time today. Thank you very much, James, for this update on um, what is today uh, Dubai's large and the region's largest uh, free zone, very comprehensive offering, and also a very credible place from which to do uh, business out of. Uh, not every free zone are made equal. Uh, some uh, are less or more credible depending on the processes they have. And as it turned out, the DMCC and uh, Jebel Ali free zone are some uh, amongst them highly rated by banks. And that is paramount in a world where banks are increasingly de-risking. Uh, it's not only the firms that need to be credible, but it's also the supporting environment. And that's what these DMCC and Jebel Ali do for uh, you as a host. So uh, beware when you pick your uh, free zone. And as it turned out, uh, Jebel Ali is next with uh, Faisal Jassem. And what I find interesting in comparing these two, it is really what you need because uh, one is very focused on the trade, the other one too, but comes with a highly logistic background and I think in a in an area where in FNB where you would often need to think supply chain and uh, particularly cooled uh, transport uh, Faisal uh, certainly has some very valuable input Faisal please unmute yourself and the floor is yours perfect thank you so much uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, pleasure to have you all here thank you for joining us um, and I think it's a nice segue as well um, to just carry on uh, what James's point has been mentioning. I mean, he was talking about the coffee and the tea center. I mean, they're located in Jobs. And in fact, is, uh, the CEO of the MCC always says that that's the MCC's uh, embassy um, in Jobs. Um, so I'll give you a brief presentation about the free zone. So when we talk about Jobs, so we're part of a larger group called Dubai Ports World. We have approximately uh, 80 ports across 40 countries in the world. So you could see some of those ports over there on our string of pearls, as I like to call them. Um, in terms of, we have uh, three economic zones, of which Jaffs is the largest. The other two um, are catered to the automotive industry and to mainland industries um, and companies, so it's not a gated free zone. We have as well trade enablement services, which I'm going to explain to you later on and how it comes in together. And we have as well one-stop shop solution. So just before we go to the next slide, I just want you to emphasize something. I just want to emphasize something very important. So you have... 
halfway across the slide now, and it says connectivity. So we're connected to more than 140 ports of call with more than 90 weekly services um, a week. That is very important because you as traders, hopefully when you do decide to come here and do decide to serve the larger region, you will be doing a comparative analysis with other free zones and other ports. There are very few ports. In fact, there's only probably nine others around, uh, you know, ahead of us in the world and all of them are in the far east that have the connectivity that we're talking about and do the volumes that we have. So this is very important. The frequency of service, the how quick you can turn around your, your cargo, your goods, the connectivity to the markets you need to go to. This is a critical and key factor that you need to consider when thinking of your business. Next slide, please. So we, uh, as the geographic coverage, as I was mentioning, you know, we can reach anywhere in the GCC within one day. Um, uh, so again, it's the investment that we made in the, uh, you know, digital um, infrastructure, the soft infrastructure in terms of the regulations, and as well the hard infrastructure like the ports and all that, meant that we can have a quick turnaround time. So James was talking about, for example, coffee. So post-COVID, the majority of the coffee and the GCC came from, you know, from Dubai. And we're not a coffee growing country, or at least not in, in commercial and industrial quantities. Um, this is, you know, and, and the reason that's the case is because you had a lot of companies in the region that like, instead of sending it directly to Saudi, to Kuwait, to Oman, and to other regions, I just will send it to Dubai. And then, you know, from there, it just, you know, I can disseminate it across the whole region. So this is a discussion that we're having frequently, not just with food and beverage companies, but with a whole multitude of companies. Like, guys, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You don't need to go to different geographies. Geogra and step Geogra over you can come to us and handle the entire region out of here. Um, so it makes it very convenient. I mean, look, DMCC have lovely offices with great food outlets. And then, you know, the down and dirty work can be done with us in JAPSA in terms of the warehouses, the ports, etc. So, uh, you know, it's a complimentary service. Next slide, please. So when we talk about JAPSA, you know, we have to talk about it in terms of, of what we offer. I mean, um, you know, uh, Jan was mentioning that, you know, the, the logistics comes down to us, which is very true. So I'll just give you a brief, brief background on it. So the Jebel Ali port is the, as I was mentioning, the you know the 10th largest port in the world in terms of volume. We have the capacity to handle 22 million containers. So it's quite a large volume. We have uh, multiple economic zones. Uh, Jabsa is the flagship free zone. Um, and Jabsa alone has approximately 7,500 companies um, in its free zone. Um, again, the advantage is 100% foreign ownership. What also sets us apart is that you don't pay customs or VAT. So let's say your goods are reach the free zone or within the bounded community, within the gated community, you don't need to pay customs, you don't need to pay VAT when uh, if it's within the free zone. So that means re-exporting it is very convenient. So you being in France, you know, can ship over your goods over here, keep them, store them, and once they're sold to other jurisdiction, jurisdictions or other markets, you know, you can just immediately have a logistics company or you yourself can you can transport it, but at least it saves you on VAT and customs. So we did approximately $100 billion of trade last year from our free zone and our port. Um, you know, we have a variety of, of, of as well, um, logistical solutions for the food and beverage, cool storage, cold storage, ambient storage, you know, um, reefer containers, etc. all that can be handled from us over here. We even have a sister logistics entity called Smart Solution Logistics, which do a multitude uh, of logistical services. They even have a, a fully fledged, and I know because, you know, the audience is, 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 is you know, from, from France, we have a fully fledged uh, warehouse just dedicated to wines. So I'm sure some of the France's best wines as well could be located as well on uh, uh, in, in our sister entities uh, as a warehouse. So hopefully, you guys, when you're here in Dubai, we'd love to meet you. And if you, uh, you know, want to see our logistical operations, we'd love to help. Next slide, please. So um, the upside down F is the Jebel Ali port. Um, the, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see my screen, but anyways, they're the Jebel Ali uh, free zone and then the El Maktoum International Airport at the bottom. That yellow um, uh, circle on the uh, right-hand side uh, of the screen is the expo site. So the airport and the seaport are all within a custom bounded area. So you and food and beverage, if you want to fly out your goods or you want to ship out your goods, all can be done within a custom bounded area. That means you have access to, you know, all you know modes of transportation in terms of roads, in terms of seaport, airport, and soon, hopefully, in the next few years, rail. So you see that little snake snaking around from the port all the way to the bottom will be the rail terminal, which hopefully will as well link into Saudi Arabia, which is, again, a big food and beverage market as well. So this is just something to keep in mind, um, you know, when you're planning for the future. Next slide, please. 
So we have as well what's called the one-stop shop model, um, where all relevant government departments and ministries can, uh, you know, have a representation in that JAXA. And, uh, you know, 99, almost 99% of the services can be done online. So even during the height of the lockdown, clients were registering companies. I mean, we were registering companies, clients renewing their, their trade license, um, you know, renewing their insurance, getting their bank um, transactions done. Everything can be done online. So it was business as usual for the vast majority of clients. We as well have a variety of, of, of solutions. So we have desks for people who just want to start off and dip their toes in the water. We have offices, we have warehouses, we have showrooms, we have plots of land. And even for large clients who want, you know, 7,000 square meters plus of a purposely built facility, we can build it for them and lease it out to them over a long period of time. So uh, there's a variety of solutions that we can uh, provide to clients. And please don't think that, uh, you know, there's no client that's too small for us. Um, you know, a client that's small today is going to end up, you know, we hope they're going to end up being a, a Fortune 500 in the future. So we always look at clients and we always look at you in terms of the potential of what can be in the future. Um, so please, if you have anything, let us let us know and be happy, uh, we'll be happy to help you get started. Now, in terms of the food and beverage capabilities, next slide, please. So I just want to give you a brief background. So these, in terms of food and beverage, these are what really we can handle in JAPSA. So, or, you know, oil seed processing, tea, processing. So James was talking about the tea center as well. Unilever, for example, has a, it was until very recently, the largest tea factory in the world. Now it's the second largest tea factory in the world. So all of Lipton's um, tea that goes to Australia and New Zealand does come out of the Jabal Ali port. We have a sugar refinery as well. So it's the largest standalone sugar refinery as well in the world. Again, the sugar refinery, they get their sugar canes um, and raw sugar from Brazil. They process it and refine it over here and then ship it out to, to countries. Grain processing, we have a variety of companies that do that over here. Meat processing as well. Uh, bottling, a number of bottling plants and facilities. Food processing as well. Um, a lot of companies do that over here. And chocolate manufacturing. Um, so that is something as well that, uh, you know, is, is always a treat to have. Um, grains, uh, for example, which is a large uh, commodity that we trade in over here, we have the variety of facilities that can help process that in terms of the deep water port to make sure that we, you know, welcome the large break bulk container ships in terms of the containerized, you know, movement of goods in terms of the warehousing, the processing, the shipping out, etc. All that can be done uh, with us over here, even in terms of the last minute detail from last mile delivery, cold storage, cool storage, etc. All that can be handled by us. So do not fear uh, with regard to uh, to that. Next slide, please. So just a snapshot of the uh, bilateral re relationship that we have with France. So we have approximately 150 French companies in JAPSA, very proudly so, that employs approximately 1,100 1, people. Um, you know, a lot of the, uh, as you could see, the imports and the exports uh, in terms of top commodities are related to food and beverage. So you could see, for example, the imports, you know, the two largest, um, three actually out of the five, are all related to food and beverage. Um, it's been a very healthy trade figure as well, uh, with the, you know the volumes increasing. Obviously, 2020 was I think a bit of a hiccup for everybody, um, but hopefully you know 2021 etc. It does start to pick up again. Next slide, please. So we have as well what's called uh, a few bridge, bridge products. We have Project India Bridge, uh, which links us to um, India. So we have uh, uh, extensive uh, logistical and port capabilities over there. So as DP World, we are the second largest investor, um, FDI investor in India. So we manage 25% of India's trade. We can help facilitate first mile all the way up to last mile logistics uh, to India, uh, to and from India. So if you have any uh, queries relating uh, to India, please let us know. I'll be happy to put you in contact with the team on the ground. And we hope to also roll out these bridge projects for other locations such as China, um, you know, Africa, Latin America, etc. So when you think of jobs and you think of Dubai, really think of us in our totality in terms of being trade enablers and partners with you um, in the future. In terms of connecting you, again, going back uh, to what I was mentioning earlier, the connectivity that we have, the ports of, you know, the, the weekly services, the ports of call, etc. These things are very important to think about when you're running your business, especially when you're relating to food and beverage, because you know, your commodity or what you deal with is, is so sensitive, time sensitive. So that's why it ends up being it ends up being an issue. So this is something to keep uh, in mind and into consideration. And uh, next slide, please. Perfect. And you have my contact details there. We'll be happy to uh, to welcome any questions you might have. Thank you so much for joining.
Thanks a lot, Faisal. That was brilliant. As you can see, Jafsa is very fast and very efficient, and so is Faisal. Clearly, he has been recruited on the, the speed of his tongue. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Very clear. Uh, so that now you see it. You see the big context. You see uh, what Dubai as an Emirate is doing in the FNB and two of its main players. What is their USP? And to round up uh, that discussion, if I can uh, ask our good friend Al Hilton to come back here and summarize what Dubai Advantage really is. Thanks again, Jan. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, the two uh, free zone presentations, of course, certainly uh, 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 stand by them, stand alone, and of course, uh, uh, the the ad and, and having uh, has a Dubai municipality on the, the uh, food security side of things is is very important as well. So that uh, it frames um, uh, what the over overview of uh, Dubai is all about when it comes to to food. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, Dubai Advantage. Uh, and, and it'll be more of a general uh, uh, overview of some of the some of the key sectors and uh, uh, where Dubai is, has been and where it's going and, and, and so on. So I'll try and go through this fairly quickly. So we, we always look at Dubai as uh, sort of the city, the hub, um, and the gateway uh, to uh, to doing business. Okay, as we get through um, um, as we as we bring business in here. So I'm going to show you a little bit about the GDP of Dubai in, in 2019, and you can, as you can see very quickly here, uh, there's been a lot of different areas that, that impact what the, the GDP is. And something you don't see on there is oil, okay? Uh, because less than two percent of the GDP of Dubai is oil driven. The uh, uh, food service activities and accommodation represent about 5.1 percent. The wholesale trade, 26.6 percent. And uh, you can see several others in here as well. Next slide, please. I mentioned the city, the gateway, the hub. Uh, this will take us, you know, right, right through. Carry on to the next slide, please. Where Dubai is located, um, it's very central in the world. And we can reach a pop population of about 2.4 billion people, all within an, hour, uh, an eight hour uh, flight of Dubai. So that means we've got, uh, you know, the CIS, we've got the African continent, we've got uh, the Southeast, South, uh, Southeast Asia uh, market, as well as the GCC and parts of, of uh, the Middle East as well. And that is a huge area for us to, uh, to look after. Next slide. So here comes the hub. So when we talk about the hub in Dubai, the, the hub is the uh, uh, being being that area for uh, domestic supply, it is a re-export market. It is the utilization of uh, the airport. It is the utilization, of course, of the seaport that we have here. Uh, next year, uh, Dubai is hosting uh, Expo 2020. Uh, it is a year late, and that's due to COVID. Of course, it'll start uh, the first of October and run for a period of six months. And it's the first time that. Um, an expo, a world expo has been held in Dubai. And during that period of time that we, we are having expo, we expect to have about 25 million uh, visitors through here. So that means a major impact to uh, uh, food consumption uh, in, in the UAE and in, in Dubai. Next slide, please. So where are the, you know, the Dubai, Dubai trade, to give you an idea where it has been uh, over the last little while, as you can see, it, it has stayed relatively stable at around 370 uh, billion uh, US dollars. Uh, first quarter of 2020 is uh, just under 88 billion. So we're, we're, we're on track to keep things moving uh, reasonably well. Next slide, please. So we've been, much like DMCC has been, we've been ranked as well as a city and uh, we're ranked third in the number of greenfield FDI projects and the fourth in, in FDI capital flows, according to FDI markets. Um, we're one of the, the, the best connected uh, cities in the world from a uh, logistics perspective uh, with the ports, as I mentioned a moment ago, and we rank seventh globally on the FDI mag magazine, Aerospace Cities uh, 
uh, of the future. Next slide, please. So one of the key things that has driven Dubai in the last uh, couple of years is uh, uh, the soft sides the knowledge-based industries. Uh, and several years ago, uh, the leadership of Dubai sought to build on its uh, infrastructure. So that's all the hard assets. So the highways, uh, building up of the port, the airport, uh, the, the, the communication system, putting a, uh, a metro in place and, and what have you. So today we are now building on knowledge-based industries. So uh, that's your FinTech, your uh, cybersecurity and, 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 and so on. Um, and of course, food falls within this as well. Um, so we are building a sustainable economy here and um, uh, investors coming into Dubai certainly play a, a major role in that. Next slide, please. One of the big sectors is manufacturing. Uh, we have got uh, roughly, I think it's six key sectors that we, we're, we're looking at. Uh, manufacturing of uh, aluminum products, uh, uh, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics. Uh, we've got maritime, uh, aerospace, uh, machinery and equipment, and of course, uh, the fast, uh, fast moving consumable goods uh, that we're, we're, we're looking at within that, that sector. Next slide, please. There you go. That's a, just a very fast snapshot. Uh, if anybody is interested in further information on very specific sectors, uh, whether it be healthcare, uh, tourism, um, uh, energy, renewable, and, and uh, what have you, banking, finance, we have information on those as well. But in the interest of time, we, uh, we're providing you with what you've got. Jan? Thank you very much, Al, for this uh, uh, input. And uh, I think I make myself the voice of the panel to, to uh, reiterate that uh, COVID, no COVID, uh, there are some challenges out there. But clearly, what you see in Dubai is a government that is behind uh, pushing and pushing and improving the environment for people not only to come here and do business through here, but to do business here, strive, grow, grow value, grow their business, and create wealth. Uh, uh, over time. Uh, often people uh, ask it, and uh, that was one of the questions ahead of this panel from people said, okay, how do I choose between JAFSA and the MCC? My answer would be don't, don't choose, uh, pick both. Uh, but if you really have to, then what you can do is you can uh, download and scan uh, our UAE, uh, which free zone for which purpose uh, series, which we publish every year at MHQ and has all the data you need and that will help you navigate how it works. Um, and how it works is really to ask yourself, what is my business is what is your need? Uh, does it matter for you to be in a multi-purpose uh, free zone like Jebel Ali or, uh, or DMCC, or do you need something that is more in line with one specific theme of business uh, that can be a possibility? Do you need to be close to your peer or what matters to use the credibility of the free zone? Do you, is it important for you to be located in Dubai per se or in another jurisdiction where you do not care too much about the time between the uh, for goods to be clear. This is a very important uh, thing to take care of. If you want to recruit, ask yourself where your staff wants to live. And often it is in Dubai. Uh, price should be um, one of the consideration. And I think it, uh, the government and these two free zones should be praised in the incentives they provided to operators this year by helping them uh, decrease uh, recurrent fees, but also encouraging new entrants to the market by providing incentives on your one setup, really uh, encouraging startups, which is something new that was never really the case before in the Middle East. And then you should look at the soft stuff. Uh, do you need logistic? Good, you'll find it in a high quality free zone. You'll pay a slight premium for it, but you will not have a headache running your business. Do you need fast administration, uh, et cetera? You should inquire into that as well. As I mentioned, the branding and credibility of uh, the country you choose to develop your business in within this country of the free zone is paramount. Uh, because the banks will look into it, your vendors will look into it, your counterparties will look into it, and you will be rated based on this small uh, uh, option and, uh, and decision that you are about to take. 
And then uh, where should you set up? Should you set up in one of these free zones or should you do go into the mainland, etc.? Well, it depends on your model. Remember my four questions? And for that, I thought I would show you a live example, a firm that was hard hit by COVID and that actually changed its, uh, its model as a result of it and strived as a result of it. So this is an agri-tech uh, company uh, from France, as it turned out, that came here and established uh, in a free zone where it has been uh, developing uh, vertical farming containers. Now, at that stage, its business was primarily to come here to build within the free zone and trade on a B2B basis with uh, businesses set up in the UAE mainland, a perfectly legitimate practice. And there the business was to do it in the UAE, a little bit to the market and internationally. Came COVID, and then uh, the entity realized that it could do much better if it was able to trade directly, B to C, and particularly through a digital interface. Guess what? Its business setup was not suitable for that. So what we did, we uh, actually extended the operation of this entity into UAE mainland, set up a UAE mainland entity of which this uh, agri-tech entity holds 49%, controls uh, most of the dividends, and they have a trusted local partner to hold the shares uh, to comply with local rules and regulation. And now they are able to cater to the local market, both B2B and B2C through one single vertical within the same country. And they've done that in a record time in about two or three weeks. Uh, in one month, they had an interface, an appropriate license and all the uh, municipality approval to actually uh, deploy this business. And they tripled the turnover as a result during COVID time. Quite a story. And this is a French company. So what I want to show to you is, uh, and what we all aimed is not only to tell you that uh, this exists, uh, that this is clearly sustainable uh, now and going forward, but also that you're not alone. Uh, a number of French company in what we call Les Métiers de Bouche, uh, our presence here have been presence here, be they chef, be their caterers, be their uh, 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 FNB schools, be there in the ancillary services like uh, uh, support, management, hotellerie, etc. All are here, all are thriving, all came here and took a business risk and no one went back. In fact, most of them are actually building their business uh, from there going forward. So if you think of developing your business uh, in the UAE, you can always uh, ask us at MHQ, you can ask uh, most of the panelists, you will have their detail uh, uh, here. Unfortunately, will be a bit short for Q&A, but no problem, you can drop uh, your questions in uh, the chat section and we will answer you uh, by return. And in the meantime, from us at MHQ, from all our panelists, we are out. Jan, I have a small question. Stefan Bertoy, the man, Can, the myth, the legend. Yeah, I'm not sure. This, uh, I, I thought it was for James, but I'm not absolutely sure. Um, does the tax treaty with the EU, um, the Emirates, apply within the free zone or not? James, do you want me to take this? You can, if you like. Um, I'll just I'll just say what my uh, sort of contribution is, and and that uh, there are there are over a hundred tax treaties with different countries uh, around the world with the UAE. Um, there isn't one specifically for uh, Europe as such. Um, no, 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 no. My, sorry, sorry. My question is: Is the free zone free zone excluded from the scope of the treaties? That's all. No, the free zones are within the tax treaty. Okay. 
Excellent, thank you. And, may, and perhaps uh, for you out there asking the question whether we talk uh, double tax treaty or investment protection treaty, equally uh, uh, important in these times, uh, you qualify for these, at least from a UA standpoint, if you meet a set of objective criteria, whether you are a mainland company or a free zone company, these criteria are you need to have a company registered mainland or in one of the free zones with a physical presence, that means a license, that means a real bona fide the office, you need to have a resident director, an accountancy that is audited together with your bank account. If you meet all this paperwork uh, requirement, you can file with the uh, Ministry of, uh, for, uh, of Finance, get your TRC or tax resident certificate, and following that claim treaty benefit with the relevant country, uh, say Belgium in your case, Switzerland, France, yeah. whoever that is. And, and I think that's an important point that companies should realize that uh, how important audited accounts are to start as early as possible so that uh, you can build up that history um, for, for everything to do with uh, tax, dual, dual taxation treaties, economic substance, all of these. Some other questions from the floor? And I'm sure that uh, Mr. Bertouille was very interested in uh, Faisal mentioning that there is a uh, wine storage in Jebel Ali. Congratulations, Faisal. <laughs> I did there, I was like coming back on that point, but yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, I see one, one, one uh, question uh, that is private in the log. Um, but I will relay it. I think it's an important one. Uh, what we have seen over the, the, the couple of years is the difficulty for uh, businesses in whether in the UAE wanting to do uh, business with the UAE to open and operate bank accounts. Uh, that is a disease that is happening worldwide. So we will not have an answer, but we can have some recipes to improve it. I think the, the way to improve it is play by the rules. In our world, pick uh, first, it's very. if you want to open a bank account in the UAE, you need to have a permanent establishment in the UAE, and that permanent establishment needs to be of good quality and substantiated. It's not rocket science. So if you want to do business, come with the right tools to do business, and then all the banks will entertain you. If you come here with a fancy company with no substance and director that is somewhere in Belize and somewhere there, that's not the type of business that any tier one financial center, which where the UAE is today, wants to touch with a pole. But if you want to do business here, if you have a JAFSA offshore, a free zone company, if you have a DMCC free zone company, a UAE mainland LLC with physical presence, with effective management, with their accounting maintained here, uh, there is no issue for you to op uh, open and operate a bank account. You will be deemed low risk, even if your um, shareholding structure is a little bit complex. I saw my good friend Dan Partovi from Jones Day uh, uh, on the log. Uh, most of these clients are listed companies. Yes, they are more complicated, but luckily for you, both Jebel Ali and DMCC are actually very good and sophisticated in their interface and they understand complex uh, structure. So do most uh, tier one banks in the Emirate. So my message to you, if uh, you want to do business here, get ready to do something substantiated. If that's the case, your operational headache will go out of the door. Very good. So on this very panelist, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the questions as well, both live and on the log. And uh, if there's anything, you see the people here, drop them an email or drop it to us. We will relay to the relevant person. Thank you very much and good sprint until the holiday season. Goodbye. Thank you.